on it. We're just talking. We have to make sure that the first principle you have is sound. But well, what I mean by that is that if your first principle is just because something comes 600 years later, it has to be false, or because it comes after, it has to be false, then that first principle is what is at, at a defect. Okay, explain. I'll explain to you why. Because intrinsically, something coming afterwards doesn't mean that it's wrong. Because if you were to, if you were to follow that principle, then after Adam, all of the other messengers that came, all of the other revelations that came, by your testimony would be false. You don't contradict. That's not what you said though. No, I did. You, no, no, what you said was that it came 600 years after and, it was, and it was 600 miles away. Different ideas. But, but my point to you was, is that that first principle, you've got to get rid of that. Why? Why? Because, just because something coming afterwards, Jesus came after, after uh, Prophet Moses, for example. We don't think Moses wrote about Jesus. But it doesn't make him false, does it? There's no contradiction. The Quran contradicts. Well, that's a separate all, issue. Well, can I well, look, that's a separate that's issue. Can I no, that's, well, that's no, 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 but that's a separate discussion now. Yeah, but that's the reason, that's the main reason, is because the Old and New Testament so, don't just contradict that? Them. Right, no, but the Quran But the yeah, issue no, is, contradicts but the you raise that issue. Okay, can that's, can that's, that's where okay but do you take that back then? I'll take what back? The, the, the fact that it came afterwards and the fact that it was 600 miles away. If you listen to what I said, yeah. I said it came 600 years later, right. 600 miles away. But that's irrelevant, isn't different it? Different ideas. But that's irrelevant. It contradicts it's not irrelevant. Revelation. The, the time coming afterwards no, or the location is irrelevant. Well, you agree to that. Run, it accuses the Jews. Answer my question. Well, listen, it accuses the Jews and the Christians having yeah. dodgy scriptures. But but answer my question. You mentioned 600 years afterwards and you mentioned 600 miles away. And it came with different ideas. Would you agree that's irrelevant? That no. point. No. That, that part of what you said was irrelevant. No, it's, it's important. That is so important. Well, we'll have to disagree on that because yeah, to me that's not even logical. Tell me why it's the reason why. Can I explain? Because then you'd have to deny Jesus because he came after Moses. No, because did he bring listen, anything that listen, contradicted no. the Old Testament if laws? Read, if you read Deuteronomy, just one moment, one moment, one moment, Michael. Did Christ bring in his message anything that was different and contradictory to what the previous prophets have brought? I didn't say fulfill. Did he bring anything, bring anything different? So, in terms of the punishment for people who worship other than the God of Israel, what was the punishment earlier that God revealed to the Jewish people? And what is the punishment, what is the punishment according to what Christ brought? But, but what you're doing here is... Uh, Jason, here, Jason, Michael has... No, Michael... Michael, the team, but Michael made this a reason for his rejecting, included, rejecting the, thing, the Quran, right? Yeah. So you Jay. must then, oh, you know, substantiate yeah. your reasons. Okay, go again, go again. So now, you're equivocating. That's what I was How do you see this? You made a claim that the Quran you reject because it comes 600 years later, 600 miles away, and it has different ideas and contradicts the previous revelation. Good. So, so I gave you an example where an example of of punishment for worshiping other than the God of Israel. What's the teaching Christ brought on this issue? And what was the teaching before Christ was here? Well, it says in the Old Testament that anyone who worships false gods will cross the stone to death. Okay. Okay. Now... Is this the same idea Christ brought? Where, where has Christ... Said? Did he have a different idea or the same idea? What do you mean? What are you on about? In the Old Testament times, anyone who worships other than the pro God of Israel, they should be put to death. Right. This is one idea, correct? Did Jesus bring the same idea or a different idea? He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled it. Sorry. Hear my words. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Did Christ bring the same idea which is? Easy. Easy. Which is anyone <laughs> who? <coughs> oh, excuse me, please. Whoever, whoever's smoking, please. Um, it's not about water. Oh, it was, okay, thank you. Do not. That was a powerful text. Yeah. Smoke, right? Michael, the idea was anyone who worships other than the God of Israel should be put to death. In the Old Testament law, in Deuteronomy, if you worship other than the God of Israel, you're commanded to be put to death. 
the right. mosaic law. That's the mosaic law? Yes. That's an idea. Good. We're talking about ideas. Did Jesus bring the same idea which says anyone who worships other than the God of Israel should be put to death? Or does he have a different idea? I'll, I'll respond to that, what you just said. Uh -huh. Jesus came, he came to bring a New Testament, okay, that's the Christian view, he came to bring a New Testament and he fulfilled the Old Testament law because he made it, how can I, what's that word, do you know when it makes it more... He fulfilled the types. Yeah, he fulfilled the types of that new law, new law. I'll give you an example in the New Testament with regards to stoning. A woman was caught in adultery, okay, and the Jews said, this woman was caught in adultery, according to the law, she must be stoned. So Jesus showed them their hypocrisy because the, the reason the law came was not to be made righteous the law came to show us that none of us can keep it that's the reason no one's justified by the law and Christ pointed that out in the New Testament because he said whoever is without sin cast the first stone and he made he made it that much greater and he fulfilled that that's, that's yeah. the story of the adulterous woman you're talking about correct yeah. is, that, so is that found in the now, is that, now, is that found now, in the, now, in the old, now, oldest now, now, complete manuscript in the Old Testament that, that's a simple that, 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 it's, it's a very important point. Yeah. The reason the law came... No, no, but Michael, but you, you quoted... You know why the law came. You, you, this is important. No, but listen, you've quoted important. something. You've quoted something. Correct. That doesn't even exist in the oldest, com most complete manuscripts. Okay. In, in the Codex Sinaiticus, that verse, that verse that you've mentioned does not exist. Uh, the textual, is it a textual variant? No, it doesn't exist. No, it does. It's a textual no, variant. No, 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 no. It's a textual variant. The verse itself doesn't exist. It's a text, that's, that's not so true. this, this verse came in later. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, look, so brothers, we need to, well, it exists now, well, it exists now, well, it exists now, well, it exists now. Well, it exists now. Textual variance. but it didn't exist in the most, uh, uh, most, uh, I asked you a specific question, and is it a textual variant? No. It is a textual variant. No, the verse You're itself does not exist. When does it exist? Since what is the earliest existence of this verse in, in John? Uh, so if you look in the Codex Sinaiticus, look, that verse does here's, not this, exist. here's a scholar, he's Bible, going to now tell us. In some Bibles, you're a scholar, right? So a reference in some, in some Bibles, in the early no, no, verse. When does it exist in the manuscript of John, where this, or, or Luke, where this verse occurs? I don't have it on my head. On my head. So you don't know? No, but I have studied it. Have a look on here. No, yeah. It's a textual variant. We do have manuscripts. In some Bibles, you have one verse, and then they miss, they miss a verse number. I understand. They jump to the next verse, I agree with that. and then they I, say I, I this verse does not exist no, in the oldest complete I manuscript. I disagree what you're saying there, but there are manuscripts with it in, and it is a textual variant. So, so the question was to you, Jason. It's a textual variant, no. When is the earliest occurrence of this statement found in the manuscript of that gospel? Because we are saying it's a later interpolation, later forgery. Yeah, but there's a first, first reference, there's a first reference by the early church fathers, a little quote. Then St. Augustine says it was left out because they didn't like you're, you're not answering the question. One, one thing is important, Michael. Can we just go back a little bit because we've yes. moved on a little bit? Michael. Yes, we have to go back. Michael, the question we're discussing. Look, the thing here is this, right? And I hope you sort of hear what I have to say on this. When you make certain claims about the religion of Islam, the fact that, that it came later, the fact that it was in a different location, and the fact that it brought a different message. No, no, that's your view, right? No, 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 let's, 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 let's just take that view. And then at the same token, I think, I think you're quoting stuff in the Bible that didn't even exist before, and you're quoting a, a, a Bible, the New Testament, which doesn't have, in your own view, the same laws that have to be adhered to in the Old Testament, so it's a bit. Look, it's a, it's a little bit. It's a little bit abast. Okay, I've got the answer. Since you don't remember, I'll, I'll remind you. So in John 7, 55, 3 to 8, 11, this verse, look. Papyrus 66 from this, the earliest papyrus, second century, folio 52, doesn't have that. I don't know. Good. So it's not a textual variant, it's non existent. Secondly, it's a textual variant. I'll, I'll tell you what textual variants you're talking about. Michael, yeah, are you listening? Yeah, yeah. Now, this text is from the 5th century, 6th yeah. century. It's a textual right? variant. Look, Looks like one the earliest that we have, like the 2nd century, it is simply not there. Look, if you read this here, in, excuse me, Jason, if you read the Greek there, it goes. 
and it totally omits the whole section. That means it's not there. It was later introduced to manuscript tradition later. later. So now, this was only a side point. My question to you in response was, when you said, oh, the Quran you reject because it's later and has different ideas. So the Old Testament idea, let's call it idea, was that anyone who worships other than the God of Israel should be put to death. Did Jesus have the same idea or not? I'm, I'm asking him about the question that we're discussing. So did he have the same idea or not? Just take it to control it's not That's the discussion. Okay. When Jesus brought the law, he gave it more of a standard. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Is it same or is it different? It's the same. Same means what? You can stone to death or you should stone to death. It's the same, but what he did, but. the law was never meant for righteousness. This is the Christian position. You need to understand this. The reason the law came in the beginning, in the Old Testament, well, is the knowledge. The law is the knowledge of sin, basically. So we've got the Ten Commandments, I'll show you did they apply that law before? Law before? Did people apply this law in the Old Testament times? Did it actually happen or was it just... Yeah, they were put to death. Right. So they understood their text. Excuse me, ignore him. Ignore this gentleman. Excuse me, Michael. If you don't, if you don't ignore this gentleman, I'm not going to speak to you, right? Good. So, not you. The other, other guy at your back. No, so, it becomes like too so, many people, so, then, so Michael yeah. and Jason, we have this. In the Old Testament time, they understood and they, and they applied that idea. Did Jesus ask to be applying that idea? Did he ask to apply that idea? He did, but what he did, he, he added a better moral standard So it was a different it. idea? No, no, it wasn't different. No, it fulfilled it. He uh, exposed okay. so the hypocrisy. So what, according, to his, so according to his idea, should you put someone to death if they worship other than the God of Israel? What he did, he exposed... Excuse me. I could ask you I'm asking you a simple question. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the best. Simple. Yeah. Uh, but you haven't understood my question. No, I do, I do understand. The question is this. If you. someone worships other than and the God of Israel. Like this gentleman, imagine now, yeah. he worships a cow, right? God of Israel is not a cow. If he worships a cow, yeah. should he be put to death according to Christ? Now. No. No, because it's so that means it's a different idea. So now we should reject, according to your own standards, we should reject Christ's teaching because it's a different idea. If you're saying that, that, you're saying that, that change is the fulfillment of an idea, then why can Muhammad not have fulfilled the idea that came before? With changes, yes. Be consistent. Can I say something? Let, let the brothers speak. Can I say Number one, it is in text, so it is classified as a textual variant, John. All right? It might not be in the second century, but if it's in the fifth century, it's still a textual variant. That's number one. What if it's added today as a textual variant? Would you still accept it? I know. No, I, I, want you, I want you to teach it's me about. Textual variant. Okay, okay. Jason, teach me about. If, if okay, it's in an teach me. Text, good, good. Whether teach it's in me. the fifth century or the eighth century. Okay, teach me. Teach me about textual criticism. If someone inserts in a Bible today, 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 21st century, would you call that a textual variant? No, you, you, let me answer it my way. Yeah. There are three families. There's the Alexandrian family, there's the Western family, there's the Antioch family, there's the, the, Bi the sorry, there's the Byzantine family. There are three families of text. And there are times when you had lectionaries. And in the lectionaries, they were, they were organized in different readings. So Luke was chopped up, John was chopped up, and there was different readings. So these changes that you're seeing are from the lectionaries, right? So we can see the changes. So can I ask you a question? Let me finish. Yeah, that's yeah, finish, yeah, right? yeah. So it's not simple what you're saying. It's a textual variant because there is an ancient text there yeah. and we can discuss that. There's evidences to say that it's not there. You're correct. But there so it does matter but, but, if it's from today but, or from the time. No, can, can I ask you a question then? Can I ask you a question then? So therefore there were millions of Christians who read that verse thinking that it was the word of God and that God said those things. Yes. Right. And it might not have been God's word. No, it, no, it is because it's in the Byzantine line. Okay, then. So there were pe millions of people who read the Bible 
where that verse wasn't there, okay? And therefore God did, as far as they were concerned, deceived by God. Say. Did God deceive them? No, because you've got to understand the Byzantine line, the Byzantine line were more accurate, right? Okay. The Alexandrian line right. was not as accurate, okay. right? So were they deceived by God, so, so by following so, an inaccurate so, transmission? So one, so one is more accurate than the other. You've got to I, I, engage with me. Okay. No, I accept so, that. I you, accept bro. that. But you see... I you have see, been and you see, are not listening. See, but this is, this is the difference between when we talk about the Quran. We don't have these issues. You've got textual variants. We don't have textual you have variants. Quran. You've got textual variants. Look, Mansour, Mansour has done an extensive amount of work well, let's talk on, about online, it. online, with extensive work, extensive reach. And you know what? I, I, look, I'll, I'll make it very simple for you. Very, look, I'll make it very simple for you. You know these claims about textual variance, change, manipulation, fabrication, being the word of, of man, etc., etc. If those, those claims, now listen to this very carefully, if any of those claims were valid, you would expect a certain a result, an effect to those causes. Now, what happens is when things are corrupted and man-made and, and changed and chopped and changed and what have you, centuries later, there are certain effects that must happen. Yeah. And if they don't happen, yeah. then those first principles that you formed, which was that there was changes, manipulation, fabrication, the work of word of man, etc., could not have happened. And what is that effect that you must find? And that effect, my friend, is that when an eight-year-old stands in prayer and reads the Quran, whether he's in China or America or Africa or London, that the difference of a vowel, if I was to stand up and say, Alhamdulillahi Rubbil Alameen, Rub, instead of Rub, a seven-year-old, a six-year-old would correct me from behind in my prayer. Now, my friend, that happening today would be as impossible as you can possibly get because you would have to then prove that all these textual variances, uh, mass communication that was not there, like the internet, fax machines, telex, uh, you know, telephones, etc., etc., yet the entire Muslim world recited and recites today with the accuracy, not of even a vowel, of even how long you stretch a letter. Okay. So if, if there's a, a mud and you say, ah, uh, and you stretch it for three or four seconds, yeah. even a seven year old would correct you okay, and about. say it's not a, it's a, you have to stretch it. I respect you. So now listen, so the, 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 uh, the accusations of corruption, it, it's impossible for them to be true because the effect would be, the effect would be, with all due respect, the effect that you find today in your scripture, which is, which is, which is, this is more accurate than that. You, your words, your words. You didn't say to me, you, you didn't say to me, that one is the word of God and all the other ones are inaccurate. You just said that one is more accurate than that one. So hang on, hang on, hang on. We just want to come to a close on this one. Make your point. I want to come to a close. Well, let me make Michael was making this point. The reason why he doesn't accept the Quran and he gave some of these reasons. What we have identified, your reasons are not so valid about being 600 years later, 600 miles away and having a different idea. We show that using the same criteria, you should reject the New Testament. The Jewish people should reject the New Testament. Secondly, you brought up another example about how the Quran acts as a guardian, acts something that it testifies its truthfulness. You said it affirms. Yeah. What the Quran does, the Quran says this is correct and this is false. Quran acts as a quality control. Bahaiminen is a quality control where where the errors have been introduced, the Quran says, do not say Trinity, desist. It is better for you. It gets the Trinity wrong. Hang on, just, okay. Since, since he's brought this up, this is absolutely blatant, the total misrepresentation of what the Quran says. Important because we've got these issues about Trinity. 
Look, look. The Quran does not in any way identify the members of the Trinity. Right? Well, that's another difference. Just like the Bible doesn't identify in any way the members of the Trinity and say these three are one. Now, to claim that the Quran gets the Trinity wrong is total misrepresentation of our text. Patience. So when the Quran says, do not say Trinity, does it identify the members? It doesn't. Because it could be any of the things. For example, I know in your Bible, there are three persons identified together. Yep. The seven spirits, the father and the son. Do you consider the seven spirits part of the Trinity? Yeah, because there are many. Look at Let me, let me, no, no. Let me show you. I think now, in fact, in fact, no, he changed the subject. He took it along. You've got to let me respond to you. Excuse me, before you respond, please. Wait a moment, wait a moment. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. You're not being fair, mate. You're changing the subject. I am not changing the subject. You are. It is your friend. Your friend. Mike, we should leave that and stick to the new. Do you want to let them drop that if they want to drop that? Do you want to drop it? Because I was going to show you, I was going to show you how the Bible gets the Trinity wrong. Right. So, 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 now. Let me respond to that. I, I want to con conclude and you respond. What I'm saying this now in 30 seconds is this. The reasons you gave to reject Islam and the Quran is not even valid in your, according to your own standards and your own admissions. So you have to now re-examine, Michael, your reasons of rejecting the Quran. Because if you could not even justify your reasons in front of Tom, Dick and Harry, it's biggest corner. Do you really think in the day of judgment you'll be able to justify your rejection? I very much doubt so.